The 7th Uganda Water and Environment Week will take place from the 18th to the 22nd of March 2024 under the theme Rethinking Collective Action and Innovative Solutions to Water, Environment and Climate Change Crisis in Uganda at the Ministry of Water and Environment Headquarters in Lizira, Kampala. As part of the week, key sector international days, that is the World Water Day, International Forestry Day and the World Meteorological Day are commemorated. Various events such as panel discussions, site events, paper presentations and exhibitions will be organized for the sustainable ecosystem and the development of Uganda by different stakeholders on water and environment issues. Uganda Water and Environment Week 2024 is organized by the Ministry of Water and Environment through the Water Resources Institute with support from development partners. The week will be opened by the Deputy Speaker of Parliament, the Right Honorable Thomas Taewa. For more information, visit our website at www.mwe.go.ug. On the 15th day of March 2024, thank you once again for joining us. It's always a pleasure. My name is Patricia Lokomampango. Let's head into the bulletin. Now, President Museveni has returned home after a one-day official visit to Zanzibar. The president spent the better part of yesterday meeting with Her Excellency Samia Suluhus Hassan, the President of the United Republic of Tanzania and His Excellency William Samuel uh, Ruto, the President of the Republic of Kenya. Their discussions centered on the East African community, particularly uh, fast tracking on the Federation, uh, guided by three perspectives. Uh, that is perspectives, that is the unity of communities within the East African community, their economic interests of building a bigger market and strategic security that guarantees the stability of the community. Upon his return, President Museveni was warmly received at Entebbe International Airport by Her Excellency, the Vice President of Uganda, Jessica Rosepel Alupo. The head of uh, public service and secretary to the cabinet, Miss Lucy Nachove, uh, the commander of the UPDF Air Force, uh, Lieutenant General uh, Charles Okidi, the director of crime intelligence, uh, AIJP Christopher Damolida, and the deputy commissioner general of prisons, Mr. Samuel Akena. And now over to Parliament. The Speaker of Parliament, Annette Anita Mong, has adjourned parliamentary settings up to the 28th this month and sent the ministerial policy statements laid on table to sectoral uh, committees to 
to be handled within two weeks. Now, during the special seating of the House to consider the, the ministerial statements for financial year 2024-2025, uh, Mang termed the information about Parliament and social media as rumours without evidence and she declined to answer to the questions of accountability. The Office of the Clerk to Parliament Thursday communicated that there will be a special sitting since Parliament had been on recess to lay ministerial policy statements on Friday. During this sitting, on reactions and from communication of the Chair and matters of national importance, the Leader of Opposition, Joel Senyoni, raised the issue of information on social media about Parliament, saying, for three weeks now, Parliament has not come up with a comprehensive response. Questions about how we use or even misuse the people's taxpayer money. In deafening silence from this institution, right, Honorable Speaker, regarding the issues which are raised by the people. And like we are saying, we are a people-centered parliament. Some members of parliament reacted immediately, calling for point of procedure, asking whether it is right for parliament to debate social media reports. Therefore, I'm seeking your guidance, whether we are going to proceed handling matters on the floor of parliament based on media reports. Speaker Among asked the lead of opposition to lay the evidence on table because the House must have evidence-based debate. She also explained that the leader of opposition wrote to her a letter to which she responded. The evidence lay on table and after you've laid any evidence on table, then we debate on it. We will have the commission meeting and we'll discuss those things and come with a solution and report back on the findings. A commission meeting can sit is after 30th June. That's the letter you wrote back to me, right, Honorable Speaker. Speaker Among at this point ruled that Parliament first consider laying ministerial policy statements, then revert to other issues. Have anything else? Let's first lay the ministerial statements, because I want to give ministers, I mean members, time to speak after the ministerial statements. Although some members of parliament supported the speaker, Remyaga legislator Theodore Sechikubo rose up to speak, but the speaker first denied him the opportunity. And clearly stated that let's proceed with the laying of the documents, then we can move to move. No, the issue of the Honorable, Honorable Sechikubo. And, and I have not I have not given you the, the, the mic. For the procedure. I have speak. not given you the mic. Sech Kubo accessed the mic and opposed the speaker's statement that the matter will be debated in the commission. He said this matter has made parliament lose integrity and asked for clarifications to the allegations in the media, especially social media. I'm not a member of the parliamentary commission where you are insinuating that you can have matters of such public importance debated in there. Right, Honorable Speaker. You say we debate other things, we lay the papers, when the credibility of this House mm. is under challenge. We are to perform Article 79 of the Constitution, the oversight function. We are taking oversight role on other institutions and arms of government. But when it comes to us, we want to hide it under carpet. Sit, I give you an answer. Sit, and I give you an answer. Honorable members, I will never, and I'm, resp I'm saying, never give you an answer on hearsay, on rumor mongering. After laying off the ministerial statements, Speaker Among adjourned the House to 28th March. However, this was taken with a pinch of salt by Leader of Opposition in Parliament, Joel Senyoni. I now adjourned the House to 28th. Immediately after that, she adjourned the house. Why, why is she behaving in such a surreptitious manner? Why? I'm Navka Farida and Gloria Guitabenji. Now a little bit into the education sector. Speak of Parliament, Annette Anita Mong has instructed Ministry of Education and Sports to carry out investigations into Nakaseke District 
where over 40 primary teachers were assessed illegally. The MP Nakaseke Central Mayanja Island claims that the Nakaseke LC5 chairman subjected mock exams to teachers of schools that performed poorly in 2023. And I will also this Wednesday in Nakaseke District at Nakaseke Technical Institute, it's alleged that the LC5 chairman subjected mock exams to primary teachers from schools that performed poorly in the 2023 PLE exams in order to improve on their performance. The matter was tabled by the Member of Parliament, Nakaseke Central, Alan Mayanja, who cautioned the Minister of Education and Sports to clarify if this is a new policy that needs to be followed. So the Minister of Education should uh, come and explain how is it implemented, is it a policy, how is it going to be implemented, because uh, indeed uh, when you look at it, some teachers are approaching me, they are saying that they are being disrespected in line of that. So meaning the, 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 the minister has to come in and explain to the house if it is a policy, how is it implemented? After exams, what next? The Speaker of Parliament, Annette Anita Mong, instructed the Education Ministry to conduct investigations into this issue. Across the whole country, not a specific district. So the ministry, you need to, one, somebody should go on ground, one of the ministers should go on ground and see whether it is really true. And then an action must be taken. The speaker, however, pointed out a number of issues that constrain good performance, especially in upcountry schools. It may be because of the delayed payments, the long distance of teachers from where they stay to school, there is no there is no induction of these teachers the so many things so you will not only associate it with maybe on how the teacher performs as a person you give somebody to do an exam of p7 a person in p1 a person teaching p1 State Minister for Higher Education, John Chrysostom Mwingo, reiterated that the ministry is to conduct investigations into this matter. We have sent our team on the ground to find out exactly what is happening. Would this be true? And right on the speaker, I want to assure this house that after we've done the study, because we'll come back and report to you. Several members of parliament added their voice to interventions that should be done to improve performance in upcountry schools. So education must have retweeting programs through the CCT centers. You keep on retweeting and retweeting and updating some of these teachers of the current desired standard this by, by UNEP, which these teachers don't know about. Rather than being uh, condemning or us condemning the actions of the LOC5, we need actually to engage him and engage the districts to understand the deep causes of poor performance by these children. Lydia Chomkama and Gloria Gutabinji, Parliament. And still in Parliament, the National Unity Platform Party has recalled Nyendo Mukungwe. MP Matthias Mpuge from the position of a parliamentary commissioner. This follows the ongoing allegations that the former leader of opposition obtained illicit funds described as a service reward. In a public letter addressed by the acting new president, Zedrega Waru, Mpuga has been replaced by Mitiana municipality MP Francis Zake, who was last year impeached from uh, from the same position. The matter has since been in court after Parliament appealed the court's decision that Zake was illegally removed from the position of a backbencher or backbench commissioner. For the last three weeks, under a slogan, the Parliament exhibition, the National Unity Plat uh, Party faults MP Puga for taking part in a shared 1.7 billion shillings by the four members of the Parliamentary Commission. Get the feedback from them, 
they should also not take the route of becoming a political instrument. That does not serve the purpose. We want the genuine feedback from the public, not politically induced campaigns. Don't over what if he has committed a gross misconduct. That is how one can step in an office. If you have violated the law, if you have committed a gross misconduct. And I'm telling you here, where is the misconduct? First of all, it is not Honorable Pogas payment. It was for parliamentary commissioners. Two, it was discussed in a meeting. Are bribes discussed through minutes? Tell me, is there any bribe where minutes are taken? The commission was exercising it is what? Mandate. So I first remove the issue of the bribe. Two, forget the issue of it being honorable Pogas payment. It was the outgoing parliamentary commissioners. If you go to boards of, of, of organizations, that happens, outgoing boards. So what, what, what bribe is that? But if it is noob politics, please spare me that. I'm not in that. Yes, I'm not in that. Even the Honorable Senyonyi today, I will defend him because he is not just noob. He is a leader in parliament. Don't forget that. That there is you being NRM. There is you being noob. But parliament is a public institution. When you come here, you are noob, yes, but you have an obligation to parliament. And parliament has its own processes of rewarding good service. Now, the Parliamentary Committee on Natural Resources has been asked to ensure that funding for adaptation to climate change activity is prioritized to shield Ugandans from the harsh extreme weather patterns that manifest in floods and drought, among others. This call was made by self-proclaimed workers for environment who just returned from a 518-kilometer trek from Fort Porto City and Cavalry District to Kampala, capital city. Days ago, a 10-man team of workers for environment embarked on yet another trek covering over 500 kilometers with the sole aim of creating awareness on the importance of conserving the environment through promotion of climate change sensitive activities like tree planting, restoration of depleted wetlands and proper waste disposal. The trek that started on the 26th of February in Fort Portal Tourism City came to an end this Thursday the 14th of March 2024 with a petition to Parliament to establish a standalone climate change fund to facilitate any efforts geared at restoring depleted ecosystems, promoting adaptation to climate change, among other issues in the water and environment sector. Before presenting their petition, the team leader, Jeffrey Ayeni, gave a report on the observation made during the trek. Water and sanitation coverage is still low in most of the areas traversed by the workers, especially in Kamengo sub-county in Piki district, Yantonde district, and Luengo district. From these, the team was kind enough to suggest possible recommendations with major emphasis on the need for increased funding for water and environment sector. There is a need to put a stand-alone climate fund including for loss and damage from climate-induced disasters. The government should support the youth in creating more green jobs. There is a need to support local governments to develop their climate action plans and strengthen local and international partnership on conservation and climate change. In response, the chairperson of the Parliamentary Committee on Natural Resources, Dr. Emmanuel Otala, welcomed the workers first for awareness creation drive, which he described as a tool vital in recruiting the critical mass for environmental protection. All of us, the citizens and non-citizens of this country, will raise our voices 
for bringing this matter of having water and sanitation and conserving our environment as a national priority. On the raised concerns, Dr. Otala said government was already working on most of them, assuring that nothing will be left to chance, especially knowing that Uganda is mainly a rain-fed economy. Later, the workers visited both Uganda Management Institute and Makerere University Business School before taking their last leg to the Luzira-based Ministry of Water and Environment headquarters. Here, they received a hero's welcome from the line permanent secretary, Alfred Okot Okidi. It's people like you that the country lies on to deliver the message. My appeal to all Ugandans is to listen to this example citizens who have dedicated themselves to advance the cause of environment, water and climate change without without demanding payment. And as the old adage goes, hard work pays, the team was recognized with certificates for being heroes of environment. Now, Uganda's cycling team captain Charles Kajimo has added to Uganda's medal tally with a gold medal in the individual time trial. The Pearl of Africa has now garnered eight medals and primed for one of its best outings at the Games in modern times. Kajimo, who is also the African individual time trial champion, completed his race in 45 minutes and 31 seconds. Uganda has so far collected eight medals at the Games, with the others being a gold medal from the badminton double duel of Husna uh, Kobugabe and Gladys Mbabazi. The other medals are Kobugabe's silver and the badminton singles and two silvers from the weightlifter David uh, Nioita, who also has a bronze Swimmer Gloria Mzito, who won a bronze in the women's freestyle in a national record of 56 minutes and one second, completes the list. Now details of that story will follow in our subsequent bulletins. Now National Vice Chairperson of the ruling National Resistance Movement in East Africa, Uganda, Captain Mike Mukula, has embarked on a mission to assess the state of the ongoing NRM party membership registration in the region. Mukula, who started his inspection exercise from Ginger City, says he looks forward to a smooth and successful exercise with no anomalies. It is for you to note that the registrars here who have briefed me and have covered the region say that there are certain gaps that need to be filled. Those gaps uh, are, for example, involving two things, mobilization and registration. There are people who are registered uh, from the list that has come from Kampala, but have not yet come forward to be registered. The chairman, therefore, need to mobilize people from their villages or for their communes to come and update the register. That is one gap that I've noted. The chairman have not been supported or facilitated. It's only the registrars. This position I will discuss at a higher level with colleagues and see how best we can be able to address it. The second point is that uh, the registrars have said they want an extension of a day or two in order to ensure that the chairpersons can mobilize together with the registrars in order to ensure that this exercise can gain momentum 
by filling in and bringing in more people to uh, update their register. The third point which I've noted is uh, the students who are in tertiary institutions, students who are in secondary institutions, students who are in the universities who have not been registered. This is a good point we have noted and it will be catered for as we move forward. Now, Buganda Road Chief Magistrate's Court has dismissed a bail application filed by Ibrahim Musana, a.k.a. Pressure 24-7, who's faced with offences of hate speech towards the President, uh, President Chiori Kaguta Museveni, and Kabaka Ronald Mwenda Mutebi, among others. In doing so, Magistrate Ronald Kaizi asserted that the applicant has no fixed place of abode and his sureties were not substantial. Ibrahim Musana, alias Pressure 24 7, who is grappling with offenses of hate speech and malicious information against President Yorikaguta Museveni, Kabak of Buganda, Speaker of Parliament Anita Anita Mong, among others, has again appeared at Buganda Road Magistrates Court to proceed with the case against him. In the last court sitting, the accused applied for bail by presenting two sureties his sister Brenda Nambozo, and a colleague Sembata Ibrahim, Friday morning before Magistrate Ronald Kaizi. In its response, prosecution led by senior state attorney Richard B. Vombukan objected to the bail application on grounds that the accused has no fixed place of abode and sureties were not fit as backward standards. This was also in regard to the investigations officer Mpamizo Agres affidavit that was sent in to court. The place of residence or fixed place of abode plays an important role because it speaks to the credibility of the accused person or the applicant. Failure to have a fixed place of abort makes him a flight risk. He further cited that following the nature of the offense, the accused is safer in prison than outside since he might be subjected to mob justice. However, this was objected to by the defense lawyers, saying that prosecution is intention is to keep the accused person in prison. The applicant attacked very important persons in this country that even his life is insecure. Actually being in custody is for his own benefit. After listening to both sides submissions, Magistrate Radika is in his ruling, dismissed Musana's bail application. In light of paragraph 13 1K of the bail guidelines, I don't find the accused person to have a fixed place overboard. The evidence on record shows that he stays in charge zone, Kauga in Mukono, Kakori in Budaka, and the hotel in Intinda. I note that the residence of the applicant is not clear. And without substantial shooters, cannot be released on bail. With this, he reminded the accused persons to Zilla government prison until 26th March 2024. After court, some people from Buganda Kingdom. We are pleased with the ruling. Bana febanji abavu deyo nevageza koko kuisolo gaiu musaba sajja kabaka. Saba sajja kabaka omulembe guna ukwa saba vuboka. Fedjeri zivizi na kukoa. Tuge na kujianga buli kase na buli ukanaku ukula bangi tuwa cha saba sajja kabaka chitu chikuma. Biza vukabo no kuzi sabulu ni miti mbaga no jino ukula bantu miti mbaga no jino ne technology yano atu yaba kwe kula kula ni wabula siku nyoma na kuvuma na kuvola ba kule mbeza. Prosecution alleges that. Between August 2023 and February 2024, in areas of Kampala district, while using a computer via his TikTok account, identified as Pressure 24-7, Musana shared information to Dimin and promote hostility against President Yori Kaguta Museveni, Kabaka Unadi Mwenda Mutabi, among others. In another development, the hearing of the offenses of incitement to violence against Dr. Kiza VCJ and Samuel Begam Kaku before Magistrate Mini Nancha at the same court has flopped. This for the absence of the prosecution lawyer who was occupied in another case. Magistrate Nancha adjourned the case to 19th April 2024 for further hearing. Rebecca Nantongo, UBC News. Now during the first Juma prayers of the holy month of Ramadan, Sheikh Dr. Abdul uh, Hafiz Walusimbe urged Muslims to be holy and also help those who do not have. Supreme Mufti of Chibuli Grand Mosque, Sheikh Shaban Galabuzi, who was also in attendance, commended Centenary Bank 
for the donation of 200 pounds of cement to help build the Supreme Mufti's house. Fuzi, we never ganda of a fake, Katiavisi will be sat, never be leader Macomeda. I think a Chimani Dokuvan to Chukumi, a Chinana Vasilamo Vari Macomeda, Nayanga Vasinga, political statement. So, Sava government ya Uganda, Mami Museven. Evisi will be sat to Gavano Babida Macomeda. Families are with the Zifuna Futar, the Zifuna Dak. Abamova, you know, so was in every Mava Veta. I think I want to have a Tavaina Musang. Abamova Tembe, Abamba Navia Fuzi. Abamu babo na abo nubutaba na musangu. So tusaba government yenu. Ngabu weko la kuna kuendala. Na abasiramu. Baba teba balie chisibo chino. Basibene wa ganda babo. Mere duwa okusubola okuwa yevi ntubino. Mere atuwe waza ne super supreme mufti okuwa nidiza. Kwe anziza nyo. Kwe anze ze. Siramu, Mandi Va Democola, Obu B Nobu. Got the Mutunuri de Bidia government, Nanga Mutunuri de Okwekula Kuranya. Bully Twa label the music thing, a winner will must GD or not. Everen Nekasako, Everenica Savings Group, to you go Tedeka. I don't want Bamu Tedeka. Got sent a fetusity, the Mutakam Boxi Mukutia, where me to it. Over treasure and as it were at any again a museum for a museum at a mubanka, a twisted cabrunji. Already now, you took it back with Fargo Maka Guri. You saw dog two kidsiwa to be a bazaar. If it had never two kidsiwa, you say we ringa be two kidsiwa. It is a bass of Maka Guno, the Mesa Guaramalan, to a Sabe, go only one or because I was Okuwa kendeza kubude mbainzi wa kunyukira. Basa wala ukudaya mangu, okuteke ya tekeda, wala kusivuluka na abantu babwe. Ramallani vila mbinene, vita hivi ya miezi milala. Kwa waka alawi, nisa kaba wewa, nagutu sa muka wateko, nti haa, ngei mutadewa na wafe, munga nti haa, abantu banu. Muli mbutunda, muli mbino, muli mbili, munga nti haa, jini mituwa ala habili, ula Ramallani, Na juu tuje bonge demu uviringa. Neyu meya, nga yaba ni nama somero, wupuna uh, njobwa kwa sijuwa yu mutari. Na Uganda's ambassador to Sudan, Chad and Morocco, Dr. Rashida Yahya Semodu, has called on Muslims to embrace fasting as one of the important pillars of Islam that should be practiced. The ambassador made the remarks while attending Juma prayers at Masjid Swadik Mosque in Kalitunsi, Chisenyi. Friday 15th March 2024 marks the 50th day since Muslims all over the world started fasting and the first Friday since this year's first commenced. <laughs> During Juma prayers led by Ambassador Rashid Yahya Semudu at Masjid Street in Kimosque in Chisenyi Kalitunsi, Muslims were urged to respect the pillar of fasting as it is a law that should be practiced by all able bodied people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Yatura Rikako, Oksimo Mwez Guaramaban, Edana Jifura, Empaji, Mumpaji Zedi Nietano, 
ya chirari kakubukamu wafi nabi muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallama mumako guoku bidi mukusengu kakwe sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ila nasibi miaka muenda joka Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala na mutuwala Allah na agama mkurani ndifaman shahida minku mushahara faliyasumhu umutu yena umwezi kwa ramadhani kwa kusanga u nga muramu taina chisonyisa taina chimugana kuria nti alili uoru vanyuma faliyasumu hu chimuka kasako ukubera nti no asiva ambasada semudu reminded muslims about the abundant rewards ala grants to those who do good deeds during the month of ramadhan ibo umwezi kwa ramadhani ukusoboro kufuna echitundu obo kufuna kumpere nyingi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ze yakunganyiza mu mwezi guno nebirungi ebiyitirivu atenga Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ngabwe mbagambye yaturalika ko kugusiba Abu Huraira tunyumiza na gama anti ya gama mukamu wa fi Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nti idha jaa Ramadhan Ramadhan kastai ngira bwati futihat abwabul janna emiliango je jananga Allah subhanahu wa تعالى جبلاو وغلقت ابواب النار جميع جوم ليرو الله سبحانه وتعالى جغلا وسلسلت الشياطين الشيطان ما ولزنا الله سبحانه وتعالى ازتيكا كونجيغري he urged all the muslims who bleach and practice irregularities against the orders followed for a proper fasting that can be accepted by allah <laughs> kibonerezo kiche kibi kiche bakola ekyaba bonereza muliro ninga bali mu mbere mbienzi bubweti ba muddambwe bati ba mugama anti ha ula alladhina yufthiruna qabla tahillati sawmihim ntibola bi abo bowulide ababo nabo nabwe bati be bantu abasibanga na yenga bangu okusibulu kukango obudde bwo kusibulu kate bunatuka amwa evangelical for ubc thank you very much there ivan juko now moving ahead the minister for economic monitoring Beatrice akello has warned health officials against extorting from patients at health facilities patients at busolwe general hospital complained to the minister that they are made to pay when there is an urgent need to be operated. Minister Akello was in Butanija district. Following the whistleblower's complaints, or the Minister of Economic Monitoring, Beatrice Akello, moved to Butanija district to inspect the renovation works on Musori General Hospital. That the CIA this should confirm this allegation if it is true that this patient has been neglected then the the, the, the staff on duty who has neglected the patient should be arrested i want to caution all doctors government has recruited you to help the sick people in this country government has enhanced your salary so that you give good services to our wana inchi but now again, if you are extorting money from our patients, just know if you are God, you are going to be dealt with according to the law of this country. The dilemma follows a later date in September 29, 2021, in which the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Health, Dr. Dana Twine, informing all chief administrative officers of district local governments, municipals and town councils that all construction of health facilities across the country will be handled by UPDF Engineering Brigade represented by the National Enterprise Corporation with effect from 2021-2022 financial year. The President's decision was informed by the timely and quality construction projects executed by the UPDF Construction Brigade as opposed to the sluggishness, short works and untimely completion of projects in the hands of the private contractors. Despite the presidential and ministerial directives, on site was a complaint about a contract that was awarded to the UPDF Engineering Brigade to construct the staff quarters, which has stalled for the last four years. So whenever engineer comes here, he doesn't know what to supervise because he doesn't have build-up quantities. 
So monitoring and supervision becomes so difficult. I directed him, the site foreman, to give uh, the bill of quantities to the district engineer and they should also be conducting site meetings. On the other side, the misuse of parish development motor farms was raised by the district leadership. Especially the two tractors which were given by PDM Secretariat in Betalegia, where the rightful beneficiaries did not get this tractor. And they are longing to get this tractor, but the tractors has been diverted to other groups or to other individuals, which I have directed the State House Inter Anti-Corruption Agency to investigate the matter. Crispus, Arini Tue, UBC News. Thank you very much there, Crispus, now Senior Presidential Advisor in Special Operations and also Chairman of the Patriotic League of Uganda, has committed himself to lead the struggle of redirecting Uganda to its desired future where there will be no room for corruption, unemployment and land grabbing among others. General Mohose Kainerugaba Friday evening held a public baraza at Massacre Liberation Square in Massacre City. General Muhozi Kainerugaba, accompanied by his wife Charlotte Kainerugaba, landed at Nawewanga Muslim Primary School in Kalungu District at midday from where he headed for Massacre City. He also made a stopover at Nyendo Town, a few kilometers from Massacre. <laughs> And this was how General MK, as always referred to by many, entered Massacre City. <laughs> he later joined the hundreds of PLU supporters and leaders at Massacre Liberation Square in Massacre City for a public baraza. In his address, General Mohozi started by giving a background of PLU. Mohozi then highlighted the core agenda of the PLU. PLU is a civic organization that seeks to mobilize Ugandans to fulfill their pat patriotic duties. This means organizing, mobilizing Ugandans to love their country. To be good citizens. To have a spirit of national service. To protect Uganda from foreign interference and foreign domination. The Foster General also made it clear that his long-term dream to redirect Uganda is on the right path. PLU is non-partisan. It is non-denominational and it is non-sectarian. We have people from every tribe, every race, every religion and every political party in PLU. And, and, Dr. and the Honorable Kagawa is here. General Muhozi also gave his wife Charlotte Kainerugaba a chance to speak to the gathering. Jamuli! Banasemba Bule Jamuli! Tuwala musiza nyo mwena mwena mungabwe muze Habakulu mwena mbiti wawu ya mwe Mwe vale nyo kutusanyukila we muti Mwe vale nyo kutuaniliza we muti Chino chitu suse mwe vale mwe vale ah, ah, oh. In his concluding address, General Mohoz Kainirugabari assured the communities of Greater Massacre that he will be a bridge to the many challenges affecting the area, such as land grabbing and unemployment. Time to take a short break and we'll return with more news. Stay with us. Fred! 
Osmosis. Friendly, friendly! <laughs> Fred Dola, my boss, CEO of Inojo, the general of generals, the conqueror of conquerors, the first and the final, the sky above the skies, the promised land, the terms and the conditions, the international king crocodile, the source of the source Osmosis. of the Nile. I don't have money today. <laughs> Just take a polite loan of 200 k to stock my shop. The signs and symptoms of success. The bank commander, not the bank tailor. Why hassle for a loan when you've got MTN Momo? We're so tingy. Use the Momo app or dial star 165 star 5 hash for all quick loans. Choose from the different loan options from our partners and get one that works for you. Together, we're unstoppable. The Government of Uganda and the Uganda Bureau of Statistics is calling upon all stakeholders such as the Chief Administrative Officers, City Mayors, Resident City Commissioners, City Clerks, City and Division Councillors, Wards and LC Chairpersons as well as the residents and business communities to cooperate with the UBOS field teams as we embark on advanced preparations to conduct the National Population and Housing Census on the 10th of May 2024. The census will be attended 10-day exercise to obtain statistical data and information that will be used for planning and policy formulation, including information on 1. How many we are, 2. Where we are, 3. How we are living, 4. What we own, and 5. Where we access services from. The Uganda Bureau of Statistics has now started listing of households and mapping in the 11 cities of Arua, Fort Porto, Gulu, Hoima, Jinja, Lira, Mbale, Masaka, Mbarara, Soroti, and in the Greater Kampala, comprising of Kampala, Wakiso, and Mukono districts. For more information, please call 0755 342 128 or 0773 342 128. This message is brought to you by the Executive Director and Census Commissioner, Uganda Bureau of Statistics. Census 2024. It matters to be counted. Have you packed a bunch? More of it's harbor jelly and harbor salt. Yes, we packed a bunch. It will protect your skin from skin rashes. More of it's packed a bunch. It is a new, improved more of it's harbor jelly. So soft and smooth. One, it two. is a more. Any irritations? No more rashes and irritations. Movit Herbal Jelly and Herbal Soap is rich in natural herbs for a smooth and glowing skin. Movit, all day confidence. Attention everyone, the Ministry of Health has planned to vaccinate all persons aged 1 year to 60 years old to protect them against yellow fever disease. The mass vaccination will take place in 53 districts in these regions. Kampala, Buganda, Teso, Ankole and Karamoja. Vaccination is free and available at all government health facilities and outreach posts in these regions. The vaccination campaign will take place from April 2nd to April 8th, 2024. The vaccine is safe, effective and free of charge and has been approved by World Health Organization and Ministry of Health. This message is from Ministry of Health with support from Gavi. Welcome back. It's time to look at what's happening in the world of uh, business. Now, I&M Bank, in collaboration with the Njovo Family Business, cited trust as a great pillar for succession planning. This was at an event that aimed to foster dialogue among family business leaders and experts on key challenges and opportunities facing family-owned enterprises in East Africa. Weeks, but I have the event brought together an impressive array of family business leaders, decision makers and advisors promises to be a pivotal moment for the region's business community. Discussions focused on topics ranging from family business feasibility to exploring new development opportunities in the market. Family successor already was in the next 
you know, that is many businesses that last beyond three generations, actually, statistically. But getting to, front, to fifth generation is really because of that planning early and starting to make very early decisions uh, about succession planning. I think I want to leave it to profit. I've just done it now for two years, so that they can now learn money matters. If somebody knows how hard to grow a million to 1.2, then even if you give them the leadership in a bigger business, they already have the ability to grow the wealth and to manage it. Among the esteemed partners of the event are PWC, serving as the tax partner, and Katenda Sempewa Advocates, providing legal expertise. Additionally, the Buganda Kingdom lends its support, highlighting the significance of community engagement in the business landscape. Go home, look at your children or the people you think will be your next of kin, instead of willing them the property. Will them the interest in the business and the assets and what you're doing. And if you can do that living will over the next 10, 15, 20 years, by the time it comes out, it won't even be an issue. Everybody will know who's going to get what and it should be able to work. Priority was on innovation and adaptability for one to remain agile in the face of evolving market dynamics while upholding the values instilled by the founding family. <laughs> yes, it is true. The parents uh, have been uh, very possessive of their businesses. They do not share information with anybody actually in the family. The children don't know, the wife doesn't know. And therefore, the children imagine maybe more that the business bigger than it is, or they imagine that uh, it's useless and therefore I shouldn't pay any attention. So it is really critical, that meeting, that meeting with the family and sharing exactly what is there and how it is doing is really critical to change that. The event aims to drive mutual success and support the broader family business community. Sandra Kahunde, Robert Katembe, News Tonight. Sina mjuu kusaya bana masomero Tebite kwa kuka rubili zana katono Eno kusimba nyiriri mpamfu Kino kalipa kano kabibuka Sima ya kuzunga na banka silipsi Aaaa Kati osomuro kusasula school fees zo mwana wo Ateno okola na ebila lantoko Kusimu ye yomu ngalo Icho kula changu nyo Nyiga wanyizi sita Emu mwaka tanu Sita munana not hash Huko berile mikula giridua Huboko zise apu ya MTN momo Hati kati okula churu aliru MTN Mobile Money Uganda Limited Erunga Miswa Bank and Kuruya Uganda Hi Fifi How are you? I'm fine Bobby eh? Whenever I eat chips and chicken mm -hmm. I feel stomach ache Joint pain and body weakness My dear Go to MX Nutrition Center hey. And learn the best food for your body Hmm. and get treatment according to your blood group. Are you sure? Yes. By the way, do you know your blood group, genotype, and how much you need to exercise? Come to Timex Nutrition Center for professional advice on how to manage your health and immune boosting. At Timex, we treat diseases like diabetes, arthritis, ulcers, obesity, pressure, and many more. For details, find us at our headquarters in Kampala on Nasa Road, Conrad Plaza, second floor. We also have a branch in Barara. Or call us on 0758-819952 or 0778-288361. Time Mix. Be your own doctor. Into sports, the Cricket Cranes team has travelled to take part in the 13th African Games currently happening in Accra, Ghana. The World Cup team will be eyeing gold as it takes on the other top African countries in the competition. This is the first time cricket is making an appearance at African Games. And earlier this week, the Uganda ladies team, the Victoria Pals, finished fourth in their tournament after losing to Nigeria in the third place playoff. The Cricket Cranes are in Group A alongside South Africa, Kenya and hosts Ghana. 
a squad of 15 players will represent Uganda with Brian Masaba leading the group and Jackson Ogwang staying on as the interim head coach. Welcome the opportunity to, to, to gauge ourselves against the best again. Are the All Africa games are beating us against teams like South Africa, Zimbabwe and Namibia, Tanzania and Nigeria and Kenya who are good teams and uh, we are happy uh, that uh, we, we want to go there and uh, and, and put our put up our hands again. We have uh, played good G20 cricket uh, uh, previously in the, in the last two tournaments, so we, we just want to keep uh, uh, doing well. It's excited to play at the Africa Games. Uh, first time for cricket, uh, you know, with the chance to qualify for the 2028 Olympics. So you know, we're excited to, to go out there and uh, participate in that, and uh, you know, continue growing growing uh, our brand. Um, you know, after having qualified for the World Cup, hopefully we can do well at the Africa Games as well. And uh, you know, continue pushing, uh, pushing our limits, pushing our boundaries as, as a cricket team. I, I think as a team we're in a very good place. Um, I back us to go out there and, and get the job done. Um, obviously, with uh, new wicket, new conditions uh, in Ghana, and uh, we've been following the women's tournament that's been going on. The scores were. We're middling, so you know, the wickets are not free scoring for the batsmen, but you know, it's not something that we're worried about. We believe we've got the skills to execute on those wickets as well. So, yeah, I expect a good tournament for us. As the team prepared for the games, they were joined by Greg Williams as a batting consultant for the tournament. I've eventually had a chance uh, to do a bit of technical work with the batters and the bowlers. You know, when we were together in Vintage, it was just games the whole time, so then you don't really have time to get stuck into technique. Um, so we've had a nice middle session, we've had two games and then today we had a full on four hour, uh, let's say, you know, proper professional session where we worked on batting, bowling, fielding, you know, we, we got a chance to really do everything today. I think that what's been nice over the last three days is we played in conditions that I think will be very similar to Ghana, uh, whereas I don't think South Africa, Zimbabwe have been able to prepare like we've prepared. Um, yeah, so I'm, so I'm extremely excited, um, you know, for, for what this team can offer us. There's a couple of guys getting opportunities because we have put one or two small injuries. Um, so yeah, it's a, you know, go, you know, moving towards the World Cup, this is a great tournament for guys to really express themselves. And obviously we're going there for medals. So I mean, we don't play to lose, like I've told you in the past. Um, so, so we're going there to represent Uganda and hopefully bring back some gold wear. Like in the ladies' tournament, the Cranes will need to finish first or second in the group to advance to the semi-finals before they proceed to the finals to battle for gold. In addition to vying for medals, the team will also aim to get T20I ranking points. The games will run from the 17th to the 23rd of March 2024 at the Achimota Oval in Accra, Ghana. Grace Joyce Kemigisa, UBC News. That ends our bulletin in part. That's all we had time for. Thank you so much for choosing us and allowing us into your space. My name is Patricia Lukoma Mpango. Let's meet again at 10 o'clock. Stay with us. UBC, inspiring Uganda. Yes, a very good evening to you tuned in to UBC TV. We thank you so much for following all our work, work in terms of programs. And I warmly welcome you to this week's edition of One on One with Michael Jordan Lukoma. I say it every other time that we look at variety of topics and issues, but as far as they are pertinent to our livelihood and development and important to our communities and nation at large, they are now, that's how they become important and we pay attention to them and give them the time. Now, we are one of those countries that have the largest part of the population as young, below 35 years. But these are people that are facing a lot of challenges, find themselves in a lot of problems, they're involved in crime, poverty is hitting them hard. We want to understand how true this is and if there are measures that can be taken to solve all these problems because we want to see our young people and those to come 
having a very good life. So we are going to look at how all this can be solved. And I have a young man with me here who has an inspiration agenda. And I felt we can give him, give him time and get to understand what he thinks about his fellow young people and what can be done uh, to have them living a good life. His name is Chemo Mashud Musa, and we're going to talk to him. You're most welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. How brother. is life and how is everything? Our life is good generally. Mm. And um, as a young man, I look at life in a different, different, uh, in a, on a different perspective. Personally? Yes. Okay, I met you somewhere discussing youth-related things, and that's how I picked interest in you. How would you describe the way of life of the youth, especially here in Uganda? I would uh, describe uh, the mm. way of young people mm. in Uganda as um, uh, one that one has to try. You know, one has to fight, one has to struggle so much mm. in, in order for them to get into a certain opportunity that are surrounding them. They have to struggle hard, they have to try, yeah. they have to fight. Yes, Why do you think it's like that? It's because of the nature of uh, the, the, it's because of the, the setting that is surrounding us. Mm. It calls for a lot of fighting, yes. a lot of struggle. Yeah. In these struggles, can you break down what you see fellow young people are doing and you look at it as struggling and fighting hard? One is uh, young people are finding difficulty in attaining education. Mm -hmm. And number two, after even they have attained the education they could have desired or they could have gone for, they again fight to secure jobs for themselves. And uh, that, uh, to a very great extent, it makes it hard for them. And that is why you realize that the youth are struggling, fighting, and trying so hard to, you know, to catch their prey. What do you think are the most challenging situations in the life of the young people in Uganda currently? One is that uh, un unemployment mm. and uh, difficulty in attaining the, the, the desired education. Okay. The, the two things that, are aff affected, that have affected the young people into the board model. We have young people that have not gone to school yes. and they are having businesses, they are living a good life. Yeah. They are successful. One would call it successful. Somebody is 35 years, an empire of businesses and things like that. Do you think, uh, what do you think these ones do different that the rest fail to do? When you look at the majority of people who have uh, such life that you have described, mm. you realize that it is either they could be related to certain people that secured positions for them, okay. or uh, they have grabbed opportunities when they were prepared. What do you mean by that? I mean, uh, perhaps they were somewhere and they, they were able or in position to secure maybe bribe for a job. That is when they were in position to secure positions so that they could make any wealth or any money that they have right now. Mm. Because what we look at or what we see, the truth is the situation within the country is not that that we would call suitable for every other person. Talk about young people that are in Chikuba and have own shops very big shops people are in markets young people owning very big stalls there are young people in garages that are making a lot of money in the car spare parts and things like that how do you think these ones manage to successfully uh, score goals in those areas as others lag behind even with education and things like that yeah it's because most of them uh... because we would look at others who may get into big jobs through the bribery that you talked about but we have so many who are successful in different areas, different fields, especially business and skilled labor. And they're doing better than many who are not trying such things. Yeah, sometimes it's, that is best. We will look at that based on the environment and the setting that they mm -hmm. is surrounding them. Mm -hmm. That uh, at one point, if someone is in an urban area and someone is in a rural area, realize that opportunities within the urban areas uh, are a little bit easier to access because we will uh, get access to different people, make different friends, mm. and then the, the solution, the situation that we face within those areas. Example is that someone who is in an urban area uh, 
uh, is very quick to adopt a certain behavior and certain culture that would lead them to fighting hard because one, someone is renting in town. Hmm? Someone has come to live with a relative. But at the end of the day, within towns, certain situations will force them to get out there so they could fight for something. And that is why you see that life in town is not uh, cannot be related to that in, in, in the rural in the rural area. So the youth in the rural areas are having bigger challenges than the youth in towns. Yes. But still not all the people in town have been employed and they have really what to do yes. let us start with a look at the people in the urban areas there are so many young people in kampala here yes. who are having a lot of challenges with their lives yes. what do you think then those ones end up like that even when they are in towns where there is the exposure that you're talking about it's because uh, uh within uh, within our country mm. or within the world you know when we are talking about uh 